Uh, hello and welcome to our first master class for the April Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge. I'm so excited that you're here and I'm proud of you for taking the plunge and doing an acrylic portrait. You know, it's not easy to paint portraits. It's one of the hardest things an artist can attempt to do. Maybe you have some experience painting portraits and you just want to sharpen your skills. Or maybe you've never even painted an acrylic portrait before, possibly never painted an acrylic painting before. And if that's the case, I'm happy you're here. You're in the right place. I look forward to teaching you how to paint a portrait you can be proud of step by step. So I have three goals for you um, during the lessons here uh, that are taking place within this challenge. Um, the first goal is to obviously improve your skills as a portrait painter. And if you've never painted a portrait before, to gain those skills so that you can do a portrait with confidence. Something that you would be proud to show, um, you know, your, your grandchildren uh, or your, your kids or a friend or a coworker. Um, so that would be goal number one. And then goal number two, as I record this video, uh, we're in the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak, this crisis that's just taken the world by storm. And uh, during a time like this, our initial reaction would be to kind of hunker in and just brace, you know, during the storm and just wait till it flies over our heads. Uh, but I think that's not the best way to approach a situation like this. Rather, we want to put ourselves out there and I'm not saying be unsafe, but while we're, you know, at home during lockdown, uh, sheltering in place, a good thing to do is to use our time productively. And I know that you're one of those people because you're watching this video. You want to do something productive with your time. You want to create something beautiful that you'll be proud to show for years to come. So it'll be a way to commemorate the fact that you had courage during this season uh, where a lot of people are living in fear. So I applaud you for that. Um, and my, my last goal is to allow you to give you the tools you need uh, to create a portrait you can be proud of. And that's why we're doing this, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we want to have a portrait that we can be proud to show our loved ones to say, I painted this, hang it on our walls and look back at it and say, you know, I did a good job on that portrait. I'm really happy with what I made. And uh, that's my goal for you. Now, you might want to dive into um, painting portraits for a living like myself. I'm a commissioned portrait painter. I've been painting for over 20 years and I've been teaching um, people how to paint portraits for the last few years. So maybe that's what you would like to do, dive into portrait painting. And if that's the case, I want to help you with that. All right, so we're going to be starting the master class here uh, for our portrait painting challenge in just a moment. But the first thing I want to do is just ask a blessing on this class. Uh, that's something that I, I know as an artist that the ability I have, the talent I have, and the talent you have as well, um, didn't originate in us. Somebody gave us that talent. We inherited it. And I believe that Almighty God, that the God that created the heavens and the earth, gave you and me this talent that we're trying to develop. Um, so I want to take a moment and pray. And... Uh, I just want to ask a blessing that uh, you be able to do the best portrait you can. So, Father, I want to ask a blessing on all the people watching um, this class, including uh, my good friend right now uh, that's watching this class. Lord, I just pray you bless them. I pray that you would anoint them to be able to uh, paint with confidence, with peace, with clarity. Help me, Lord, to be able to teach these concepts here. Uh, these techniques of how to paint a portrait in acrylic realistically um, so that it would just be a beautiful portrait that people would want to look at it and it would be exciting and it would be an encouragement to others. Lord, bless this class. And I pray that all the people watching, Lord, especially during this time of COVID-19, protect them in their homes. I plead the blood of Jesus over their households, Lord, for divine protection that no sickness would come near their dwelling. So bless them, Lord, protect them, and uh, bless this class in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and so with that, I'm ready to begin. Um, now, if you haven't already registered for this 
masterclass, or I should say for this challenge, uh, make sure you go ahead and do that. Uh, go to realisticacrylic.com. And at the top bar, you'll see currently as I record this, take the portrait painting challenge, learn more, click that. And then that'll take you to the page where you can register for this challenge. When you register, you'll get the benefit of receiving a supplies list. You can download that, print it off. It'll show you all the supplies you need, paint brushes, canvas, you know, um, all the different tools, colored pencils, erasers, all the different things that you'll need uh, to paint along with me and the other folks that are painting um, in our Facebook group as we record this video. Um, so go ahead and register there at realisticacrylic.com. Um, the direct link for that, I'm going to put that in the description. That would be uh, realisticacrylic.com backslash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. That's the direct link. And then uh, you'll be able to download the welcome kit with the supplies list, um, a guide on how to arrange your palette, get the colors put in the right places um, to ease frustration and so that you can mix the colors a lot easier. Um, so that would be your next step to do that if you haven't already done so. And then lastly, um, go to my Facebook group, Realistic Acrylic Portraits. Now there's instructions um, after you register for the event, but go there and let people know you're excited and uh, get to know the folks there because they're the ones that are gonna be helping you um, during this challenge, encouraging you and um, as you post your progress, you can get feedback from each other, learn from each other, because there's many experienced artists in the group that are very helpful. And that will um, help you then to increase to the next level in your portrait painting skills. So go to my Facebook group, Realistic Acrylic Portraits, and uh, get in there and, and get helped, get encouraged. All right. So with that now, we are finally ready to begin the actual uh, lesson here, the first step, and this is preparing your canvas. Now, why do we want to create a grid? Um, you could sketch on your canvas freehand, and I don't have a problem with that. Um, if you're good at sketching, you've had several years of drawing experience, then I would recommend, if you'd like to, I guess I'm not going to recommend, but I'd say if you would like to, you can sketch it freehand. Um, but I would say if you haven't had a lot of drawing experience, you've, you're just kind of starting out in portrait painting, maybe you've been painting for a while, but you didn't do the fundamental work of drawing first. I spent several years drawing before I dived into painting, or dove into painting, I guess I should say. Um, but anyway, you want to make sure you have that drawing experience if you're going to go freehand. Otherwise, I recommend use the grid, just like I'm teaching here. And what that's going to do for you is it's going to give you an excellent foundation. All right, just like building a house, you wouldn't want to build a house without a good foundation in place. It doesn't matter how good you do um, the siding, the electrical, the windows, um, the, the drywalling, the painting. If your foundation is off kilter, um, your house isn't going to last very long. Same thing with a portrait you got to have an excellent foundation, a firm foundation, an accurate foundation, and that is your sketch. Um, I, I've seen artists kind of dive into uh, painting and they, they do it freehand, but they haven't built up the years of experience in getting very accurate with their freehand drawing skills. And then they end up with a sketch that's out of proportion and the likeness isn't there. And you know, even if you can put in excellent shading and values and skin tones, texture and detail, if you don't have that foundation, all right, if you don't have that foundation of the excellent sketch, the accurate sketch, all of that other stuff is really wasted, okay? So again, I think I've made my point. Uh, if I could encourage you to do it the way I'm teaching, that would be fantastic. But whatever you choose to do, I'm still gonna encourage you. I'm still gonna cheer you on. Uh, I'm still going to be here to support you in any way I can. I just want to let you know that. All right. Um, so without further ado, we're going to actually dive into the uh, demonstration. So I'm going to take my 18 inch ruler here. All right. And I have my canvas vertical. Um, I do recommend to have your canvas 
at an angle or vertical but don't have it flat on a table. Otherwise, you're going to see everything out of perspective. It's going to be really hard to make judgments as far as proportions. So make sure you have that at the correct angle. All right, and so now we want to take our 18 inch ruler or if you have a foot long 12 inch ruler, that's fine as well. And we want to take the uh, gray colored pencil, 20 or 30%, something light. And we're going to start um, sketching in the grid. And since we have a photo reference here that's either a 4x5 or an 8x10, depending on how, which one you choose, which one you want to work from, and that's up to you, whether you have a tablet like I have, a Kindle, or you want to print it out, that's your choice. Um, but either way, it's going to be 8 inches wide by 10 inches high, okay? So 8 inches, eight inches horizontally by 10 inches vertically, all right? So what we want to do is start off doing the horizontal measurement first. We're going to take the ruler and we're just going to butt it up to the edge of the canvas and put your finger there to make sure that you have it right up to the edge, as close as you can tell. And we're going to mark off two inches, four inches, six inches. We want to make sure that we have this uh, ruler as parallel to the bottom of the canvas as possible. Six inches, eight inches, ten inches, twelve inches, fourteen inches. Okay? And then we're going to do the same measurement up here as well. Uh, butt it up to the edge of the canvas as best we can. And um, I leave a little bit of a gap on the top so I can see, you know, that I have the top edge of the canvas parallel with the ruler. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it just needs to be close. Two inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches, ten inches, twelve inches, fourteen inches, just like that. All right, now I have hash marks on the top and bottom for the uh, lines that are going across, going horizontally. Now I want to do the same thing for the vertical. So I'm going to go here and we're going to start on the bottom. I'm just going to leave a little bit of a gap, get this as flush as I can to the edge. And we're going to go two inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches, and so on. 10, 12, 14. Just want to make sure I have that flush as I can. There we go. 16, and then 18. And uh, don't have to do the 20 because the top is a 20. You always want to make sure though you start on the same edge. I, I wouldn't want to start going this way from from the corner because then the lines might not match up. Rather, I want to start from the bottom. So if you start from the bottom going up, then you also want to start from the bottom going up on the other side as well. All right, so uh, we're going to again get this up to the edge and we'll leave a little bit of a gap there between the edge of the ruler and the edge of the canvas. Try to get this as straight as possible could almost use an assistant to hold this, but uh, yeah, let's see here. Now, this might be easier to do on a table, all right, but just for demonstration purposes, the way I have my canvas set up, I'm going to do it this way, all right. Normally, I would do this on my drafting table, it's a little easier, um, but uh, like I said, just so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing it on a vertical surface. It's a little harder, but still possible. Getting my exercise, doing a little contortion. It's always good. <clears throat> All right, so now we have hash marks going across horizontally and going up and down vertically. Um, so now we just want to connect the dots. And we're going to start from the top down. Now, Hopefully the canvas is fairly straight. That would be the thing too to make sure, but uh, we'll just have to deal with what we have. All right, we're just gonna set the ruler up 
as close as we can to the lines and just use gentle pressure all the way across. Gentle pressure all the way across. Just match these lines up as best we can. Just moving our way down, moving our way down. All right, so now we have the grid lines drawn um, going up and down. Now we're going to do it going across. And so we're going to just match up these lines as best we can. That's why it's good to draw the lines away from the edge of the canvas so that uh, your ruler will meet up to connect those lines. I almost did that, but not quite, but I'm close enough I can still see it. And it's also good to sharpen your colored pencil. I think I recommended that in my supplies to have an electric sharpener if you can really really helps because the canvas texture will make these colored pencils get dull very very quickly all right we're going to just go up and down connect these lines as best i can again using gentle pressure um, Firm but gentle, you know, just kind of medium pressure, I guess you could say. Okay, and now we're going to do the last one. Oh, should, should we have that? Doesn't have to be perfect. Now, it, it doesn't get all the way to the bottom, but that's close enough. And we just want to make sure that, uh, that overall we've got the correct distance from the edge. Looks like it's about, it's on a perfect dimension, that's the thing too. Uh, one and three quarters. Here we've got almost one and three quarters as well. So you notice the canvas is not a precise 16 by 20. And that's why I'd like you to start from the left going to the right and then from the, the top going up. Or I guess we did it the other way, didn't we? Top down. But make sure you follow that same edge, um, you know, so that the lines match up. But again, we're not going to have a perfect 16 by 20. Uh, yeah, I did start. I did start from the bottom going up. That's right. Because here, here it's 2 inches, 4 inches, 6 inches. But just the last set of squares on the top are not quite uh, two inches even. They're, they are two inches wide, but um, vertically they're only an inch and three quarters. But that's okay because um, you know the main part of the face is going to be in the center, so we're not going to really even be dealing with the top. And I'll show you how to adjust for that when you get to the actual sketching stage. So for right now though, um, this will work. We've got a good set of lines here and um, that'll give us what we need then um, to, to start the sketch. Now we're not done yet though. What we need to do before we can dive into the actual sketching stage, I know you're excited and you're ready to get sketching, um, but we wanna make sure we have a good foundation for the sketch itself. Um, what we're gonna do is seal in the sketch. So that would be our next step to seal the sketch. All right, and then to seal in the sketch, what we're gonna do is take um, some matte medium and again uh, you want to purchase or somehow procure matte medium you don't want gel medium you don't want gloss medium you don't want um, any kind of gel medium retardant medium 
Um, glazing medium, no, you want matte medium. Matte medium, just think matte like my name, all right? It's spelled M-A-T-T-E, but matte medium is what you wanna use, and that is kind of a milky white, honey-like consistence when it's wet. It dries crystal clear to a flat finish, and it has just the perfect consistency for glazing. If you use a different kind of medium, you're not gonna get the same results, it'll be frustrating. So make sure you have matte medium. And um, Liquitex is a very good brand. Personally, I use Nova Color and I buy it by the gallon. And just a little plug for Nova Color. Uh, it costs the same for this gallon when you buy it at Nova Color as it does for uh, a pint, actually. Not this amount, but this amount right here. It costs the same as it does for a whole gallon as it does for this. So just keep that in mind. Um, I would purchase it from Nova Color if you're able to do so. Um, during this lockdown, of course, that makes it a little bit harder, but just uh, something to keep in mind. But what I do is I take that gallon size container of Nova Color and I refill these smaller ones. Uh, like I said, Liquitex is a good brand. What you wanna do now in this step is take that matte medium and squirt it into the small container. Okay, it doesn't have to be full, you know, maybe about just a little bit on the bottom. And then you just want to seal in the lines you drew. Um, and that way then when you start sketching, you're not going to be erasing your grid lines when you erase, excuse me, when you erase um, lines on your sketch. Okay, so we're going to start with this. Use a flat edge brush, uh, three quarter inch or one inch will work just fantastic for it. Dip that into your matte medium, get a nice copious amount on the end of the brush, and just start from the upper left hand, hand corner. If you're right-handed, upper left hand corner. Sometimes you get some fuzzies in there, but um, you just wanna work your way from that corner up and down and across, okay? So you wanna keep the wet edge and really brush it as quickly as you can and then you kind of do some smoothing strokes on the top and we're going to just again go up to this wet edge work our way across make sure you don't have any crazy brush strokes in there that might add unwanted texture to your canvas okay and it looks like I have just enough in here to seal this. Maybe I could have put a little bit more in the container. But I think I'll have enough to, uh, to finish the job. Sometimes it can be a little hard to see where it is because it is so clear. You can see how you can see right through it. You can see right through it. So the lines still remain, but it seals in that colored pencil beautifully. I'm just going to get a different angle so I can see the glossiness on it as it's wet. Make sure I don't have any unwanted texture on it. And make sure I got everything covered. Alright, so then at this stage you can just let it dry. Okay, just let it dry. Uh, you'll want to give it about oh half an hour to an hour. And depending on the humidity where you live, Right now in Wisconsin, it's cold, but I have wood heat, so that dries things out very, very quickly. Um, so it depends on where you live, but 30 minutes to a half an hour, it should be ready to sketch on. But just to be on the safe side, I'd give it two hours, and that will make for sure um, that you don't have a problem sketching. However, we do have one more step, one more step. All right, and now step number three in the process of preparing our canvas. You got the grid line sketched up, you sealed everything in, you gave it a chance to dry about 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and now what you'll want to do is go on top of this um, canvas with a mixture of gesso and matte medium. Um, so again, you can use that same container you used before uh, with matte medium in it. And you're gonna to wanna to just squirt a little more in there. I'll make it maybe about halfway full. And then you're gonna to want to add some gesso as well. And when I say 50-50, it doesn't have to be an exact match. It could be, 
you know, you're actually better off with maybe 70% matte medium, 30% gesso. But what you want to do really is just take a dollop of gesso like this, okay, with a palette knife or a spoon and just add that to the matte medium. And then you want to mix that in. Mix it in very, 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 very thoroughly. And depending on how dark you made your sketch, okay, if you used, um, if you used graphite pencil or a darker colored pencil or you applied a lot of pressure and you can really see those lines quite a bit, then you want to use a little more gesso, okay, then maybe more like 50-50. But if it's fairly faint, you could actually get away with maybe a 25% matte medium to 75%, um, I'm sorry, 25% gesso to 75% matte medium mix. 25% gesso to 75% matte medium mix. All right, so now with that thoroughly mixed, rinse off your brush and you want to have a water container for that, okay? Um, just a milk jug or something you can use. Look in the supplies list for that, but get your brush rinsed off really well. Wipe it clean on a cotton towel. And it's a good idea to make sure it's extra dry. I'm just going to use this towel here on my easel for that. All right, and then we can dip in and we're going to do the same thing. Now, I have to make sure that I have this dry. And uh, if, if you want to accelerate the drying process, what you can do is you can use a blow dryer. And, you know, if you're impatient or you just want to get on this thing right now and not waste time, grab a blow dryer and you can just slowly go over that and dry it off. So no worries there. Okay, assuming you have this all dry, you can go ahead and start adding the matte medium gesso mix. All right, so I'm going to uh, take my brush and dip that in. Just get a little bit on the edge of the brush like so. And I'm going to start applying this mixture. And you can see it really doesn't cover it as opaquely as you'd think. You can still see through it. Um, you can still see the colored pencil lines going through. But what this will do is just knock them down a little bit, make them a little less apparent and then it will also give you a really good surface to paint on. It'll have kind of a flat texture to it and it allows a colored pencil to really erase easily. So if you make a mistake while you're sketching, um, it'll ease your frustration. You can easily erase um, with this mixture on there after it dries. All right, so it's just a beautiful thing to apply this coat of matte medium and gesso. It also gives the, the canvas a little bit smoother of a texture too because you have that kind of rough texture um, that sometimes makes it hard to get the smooth skin tones that you're looking for. This, so this will smooth it down a little bit for you as well. You can see how I'm applying this very gradually just up and down working my way from left to right and making sure that I'm working with the wet edge and then coming back and smoothing it out a little bit. It's just like painting a house, you know, like house painting or painting your walls. You know, the best method is to start from one area and gradually work your way over. So kind of the same thing with this. Okay, so we're just, again, going over it with some lighter strokes. We start with heavier pressure but then we use light strokes to just smooth it out. Now at this point, it's already started to set up on that side, so I'm not gonna touch that part on the left side. It dries that quickly. Um, but here, I just wanna look and make sure that I haven't missed any areas. And it looks like everything is good to go. So I can still see my sketch through this, which is nice. And, um, then at this part, you just let it dry, okay? Again, let it dry a little bit longer than that initial sealing layer of the straight matte medium. This mixture of the gesso and matte medium 
is going to be a little bit thicker so you want to let that dry for I would say about two hours instead of like a half an hour to an hour two hours for sure and if you can let it dry overnight even better but two hours you know depending again on the humidity in your uh, studio or wherever you paint um, two hours should be enough if you touch it and if it feels cool to the touch it means it's still damp underneath there's still moisture underneath that layer that needs to get out so you wouldn't want to start sketching on it then so two hours you should be good but touch it make sure it's dry and it's not cool to the touch okay so um, at this point here um, you will be prepared you'll have an excellent grid um, and then the grid is all sealed in with matte medium and gesso so when you start sketching on it and you have to erase you're not going to erase your grid lines the grid lines are very faint so you'll be able to see your sketch lines using the darker colored pencil very easily on top of those grid lines and it's just going to make for a fantastic process as you sketch okay so i'm so excited to show you the next step um, that'll be for the next master class here in our portrait painting challenge and that will be working on the actual sketch i'm so excited and i'm going to be meeting you there so we'll be doing that as i'm recording um, i'll be recording that tomorrow which will be friday um, april 9th and um, i'll be posting that in the evening just like before um, but hey if you're watching this video here on youtube be sure to give this a thumbs up, okay? Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And again, sign up for the Portrait Painting Challenge at realisticacrylic.com. Um, you'll see that on the top bar of the website. And again, I have the exact link if you're watching this after the challenge is over, the live challenge is over for the month of April 2020. Um, you can access the, the link I have in the description and you can still download all of the um, supply list, um, my uh, palette guide, uh, the, the gridded reference photos that you can paint from. You can access all of that still on an ongoing basis by clicking the link in the description of the video or at the top of the comments um, in the comments section. But hey, leave me a comment if you have questions on this. Um, during this challenge at any point leave me a, a question in the comment get a hold of me via email um, or my Facebook group I'll be happy to help you in any way I can thank you so much for taking this challenge look forward to seeing you in the next step which will be sketching the portrait um, until then God bless you and we'll talk to you soon